Would you like to hear about the donkey that ran away? There was once a donkey who had a very kind master. He had oats and carrots every day, and in the summertime a field of good green grass all to himself. He should have been very happy, but he wasn't. It's such a nuisance to have to pull my master's cart to market and back, thought the donkey. Why can't I be left in peace in my field? Why should I have to work? The more he thought about this, the more discontented he became. And at last he made up his mind to run away. I'll go and find another master, he thought. One who will let me lie in a nice sunny field all day long and do just what I like. So that night he jumped over the gate and ran away. He raced down the lane and up the hill and down into the next valley. Then he found a wide road and trotted along it for miles. When day was breaking, he found himself in a large town and there was not a field to be seen anywhere. The donkey was astonished. He had never been in a big town before, for his own market town was very small. He ran along the streets looking about him and wondering where he could get food. At last he came to a shop where carrots, cabbages, onions, apples and plums were all spread out in baskets. The donkey stopped and sniffed. Ha! he thought. This is the place for me. I'll just have my breakfast here. So he trotted up to the baskets and began to crunch up apples and carrots. As soon as the shopman saw what he was doing, he came rushing out and beat him with a stick. Stop eating my goods, you wicked donkey, he cried. The donkey was surprised for no one had ever spoken crossly to him before. He was even more surprised to feel the stick on his back, and he brayed in fright. The shopman put a halter round his neck and tied him up in a yard at the back of the shop. There the donkey was left for some hours, and though he tried his best to get away, he could not. After a long time the shopman came back and led the donkey to a cart, where he quickly harnessed him. You rob me of two baskets of carrots and apples, and now you can draw my cart to pay for your breakfast, said the man sternly. The donkey stood quite still and wouldn't move a foot when the man called to him to trot out of the yard. Then thwack! The stick came down again and the donkey started forward with a jerk. Thwack! Oh my, thought the startled donkey. I must drag this cart wherever the man wants me to or I shall feel that horrid stick again. I shan't stay with this master. He's worse than the last one. Off he trotted out of the yard, and the greengrocer drove him to all his customers, delivering his goods at the door. The donkey was tired and hungry long before he was back in the yard. The man gave him a feed and a drink of water. Then he put him in a shed for the night. When he had gone, the donkey pushed the door with his head. He had made up his mind to run away at once. He would go and find a much kinder master, one who would pet him and give him a nice green field for himself. He soon had the door open. He trotted out, made for the yard gate, and leapt over it. Then down the road he went as fast as ever he could. He ran and ran until he came to green fields again. He chose one that seemed quiet, without any sheep or cows in, and entered it. Then he lay down by the hedge. Just nearby was a gypsy camp. One of the gypsies heard the sound of hooves and looked out to see what made the noise. He was afraid that one of his donkeys was running off. By the light of the moon, he saw another donkey, not his own, come running into the field all alone. In a trice, he was out of the van and ran to catch it. The donkey felt a heavy hand on his neck, and a rope was quickly thrown over his head. He was dragged to his feet and led to the camp. There he was tightly tied up till the morning. When the gypsy looked at him at daybreak, he was pleased. Here was a strong young donkey, well-kept and sturdy, just what he wanted for his heaviest van. He would go off straight away before anyone came to inquire if he'd seen a lost donkey. So very quickly, the camp got ready to move. The other donkeys were harnessed to their carts, and the stray one was put to pull the biggest and heaviest van of all. How angry he was! But no matter how he kicked or brayed, he could not get away. All he got was a shower of blows that hurt him much more than the stick that the greengrocer had used. This master is worse than the last, thought the donkey in despair. Oh, I must get away quickly. But the gypsies watched him too well for him to escape. When he was not drawing the van, he was tied up. 
and day after day the poor donkey had to drag the heavy van miles along the roads. He grew thin, for he was not fed well, and he was very unhappy indeed. Why did I ever leave my first master, he thought to himself. He was so kind. I had plenty to eat. I had a green field to lie down in. I had hardly any work to do. How I would love to work for my first master again. He didn't hit me. He didn't starve me. I didn't know how lucky I was then. The weeks went by, and the poor donkey grew more and more unhappy. He had tried to escape once, but had been caught and well beaten. He thought that he would never be able to get away. He wished even that he could go back to his second master, the greengrocer, who at least fed him well and gave him a shed to sleep in. Then one day he came to the little market town, to which he had often taken his first master. The donkey knew it at once and looked round in pleasure. How he wished he could see his kind master there. The gypsy vans went down the road that led to his first master's house. The donkey felt excited. They came to the house, and in the garden was the kind master himself. The donkey was mad with joy. He brayed loudly and then took to his heels, galloping up to the front gate and up the drive with the van behind him, swaying and swinging from side to side. The gypsies shouted and called, but the donkey would not stop. He ran right up to his first master and brayed more loudly than ever. The man was astonished to see a donkey dragging a gypsy van in his garden. When the donkey brayed at him and tried to nuzzle his head onto his shoulder, he looked at him in surprise. Why, it's old Neddy, he cried. But how do you come here, Neddy? Did the gypsies steal you? Did you run away? Where did you go? The donkey brayed loudly. The gypsies came running up, and the man asked them about the donkey. But they said that they had bought him at the market, and the man had to believe them. Sadly, he had to let his donkey go with the gypsies down the road. The donkey himself was full of grief. He could not tell his master all that had happened. How sad he was to think that he had ever run away from such a kind home. Two nights later, the donkey found that his rope was not tied tightly to the post. His heart jumped for joy, and he dragged the rope right off the post. Then, with a loud bray, he kicked up his heels into the air and galloped back to his first home. It took him many hours to get there, but just as the day was breaking, he came to the gate of his old field. He leapt over it and ran to lie down in his favourite corner, full of delight. But what was his surprise to find another donkey there? At first he thought he would kick him and bite him, but he had learnt many lessons now, and after a while he lay down quietly and went to sleep. The master was full of astonishment to find his old donkey in the field again. He could not think how he'd got there. What shall I do with you, he asked. I have another donkey now, and I cannot keep two. But if you promise to work hard and not get bad-tempered as you used to do when I took you to market, I will sell the other donkey and keep you, Neddy. Neddy brayed his loudest. He ran to the shed where the cart was kept and stood between the shafts to show his master that he was ready for work at once. You've learnt your lesson, said the man, pleased. You will work well for me now, I am sure, and will do your best to return my kindness to you. So the other donkey was sold to an old lady, who wanted one for a little grandson, and Neddy was taken back by his first master. But did he grumble or sigh about his hard life? Never once. I have the kindest master in the world, he told the horse in the next field. I cannot do enough for him. I wish he would work me three times as hard. I love pulling his cart to market each day. It's the nicest thing in my whole morning's work. Ho, ho, said the old horse wisely. You tell me a different story now, Neddy. Do you remember the things you used to say before you went away? What a foolish donkey you were then. I am wise now, said the donkey, and he galloped round his field as fast as ever he could.